Topaz Photo AI 3 is here, and with it comes a few substantial updates. As I've done in the past, I wanted to put out a video covering the new features and just an overall honest review of the software. I'm Austin James Jackson, and I'm excited you guys are here today to talk about Topaz Photo AI 3 and all the new features that come with the program. And ultimately, I'm, I'm going to let you decide if it's worth the upgrade or not. I know many of you watching this video may already have a previous Topaz subscription that is due for renewal. You might be wondering if it's worth the upgrade, while others of you might be here checking out Topaz for the first time. Regardless, let's not waste any more time. Let's get into my honest and unfiltered review of Topaz Photo AI 3. First things first, let's talk about the new interface. You can see how things look quite a bit different in here. They've really simplified. I mean, it was already pretty simple before, but it's even simpler now. You've got a few options down below here to switch between what view you want um, for your image preview. I always like, and I never find another reason to go off of this with the slider that shows on the left is the before and on the right is after. That's always good. We're gonna talk about this image in just a second here. Um, you also have the option to crop over here and then when you load this in, it'll automatically load the things that it thinks you need. This image, it loaded denoise, but if you need to add enhancements, you can also click here and you have all sorts of options. We're gonna be covering all of these in this video today. Let's go ahead and start with the denoise, which it added here. Now I like to always zoom in, so you can just do Command Plus or Control Plus on a PC. That'll zoom you into the image now. You can get a little bit better feel of the noise reduction. Keep in mind, every time you move, it has to re-update your preview. I am running on a pretty loaded MacBook Pro computer. If you are running on an older computer, I really recommend moving it as little as possible because it does have to reload every single time, which can take a little bit longer. So this is looking pretty good. You can see on the left is before and on the right is after. This is just one of my workshop clients here. Shot this at ISO 12,800 and it was really dark out. But you can see it's done a great job removing the noise there. I really like what it's done. Um, if I wanted to adjust the denoise, I could click here and then I could adjust the settings here. Again, these are the settings that were applied when I loaded it in. I didn't select anything. It automatically chose these settings. But if you were finding that something needed to be adjusted, you could do it here. Additionally, you have the option to click selection. Right now it's selecting all, but if you just wanted to denoise either the subject or the background or any of these options, you could do that here. You also have a brush if you wanted to mask any of that in or out. Personally, I would rather just mask in or out in a third party software like Photoshop um, because I think the masking tools aren't quite as good in here as they are in something say like Photoshop or on one or anything like that. But you do have the option, which is nice to do the selection here. Otherwise, I mostly just mess around in the controls, choosing exactly what I want. This image already looks pretty good, but if you wanted to play around with it, you could adjust these settings um, to bring back some original detail, do a little bit of de-blurring or to adjust the strength of the noise. And for denoising right now, they have three AI models, normal, strong, and extreme. This image it selected strong, which I think did a great job. So that's the denoise here. So that image we just looked at was loaded in from Lightroom as a TIFF. Now, technically, I believe Topaz will tell you that if you load in a raw file like a DNG or whatever your camera's raw file is, you know, ARW for Sony, CR2 for Canon, I don't exactly know what Nikon is, maybe NEF, whatever your raw file is, you load that in and it's supposed to give you a little better results. However, I do a little bit of both. If I can, I load it in there as the raw file. But a lot of times, you know, if I, let's say I shoot a night photo, and it's really, really dark. I want to do some processing to it before I do the denoising. So for that reason, I might do the denoising later and it still generally works pretty good. But let's take a look at a raw file here. Um, this is a .arw straight out of my Sony camera. No edits have been applied. Now this photo you loaded in and it believes it needs a sharpen, which is correct. You'll notice when I zoom in, I think the tripod moved a little bit because you'll see it's blurry. It should be a lot sharper than this. Now the problem that you have when you load in sharpen, um, it sharpens the subject only. So you need to adjust that. If you're loading in here and you're like, why isn't anything getting sharpened? It's selecting what it thinks is the subject. This is great if you need to sharpen something like a portrait where you have a defined subject, but in a landscape, generally, if some of the image is blurry, we probably want to sharpen the whole thing. So we need to go into selection here and select all. That'll allow us to sharpen the whole image. Then I can go back to controls 
and I can adjust the settings. It thinks that standard is the right AI model to choose. Let's zoom in and see how it's done. You can see it's sharpened a little bit. It hasn't done a great job in my opinion. Usually when I find the image is blurry because of, you know, it's out of focus or something like that, I usually find lens blur to work the best. Let's increase these sliders just a little bit. You can see now we really start to get to work. So now it's starting to look a little bit better. It's just up to you to decide how much. Obviously right now I think it might be a little bit overcooked. So you could drop the sliders just a little bit and you can really play with it to dial it in. That's the one thing I think that's really nice is it's super easy to dial in the settings. You could try a couple of the other models as well just to see how they work. That one doesn't look too bad either. Um, and the nice thing is, you know, if this image had a little bit of noise too, I could go in, add another enhancement, add a denoise on top of that. Additionally, if I wanted to do something, you know, like upscale, I could do that as well. All in the same place, you can see how all of the adjustments work with each other um, and you can adjust them one at a time. Additionally, you could save a preset if you were like batch editing or something like that. Um, but I think that is pretty much covers how to use the sharpening. It works pretty well in my opinion, especially um, the, the autopilot works pretty good on sharpen, but you will need to go in there and make some adjustments from time to time like you could see on this particular image. Now, I generally don't take a lot of portraits, but let's look at a JPEG portrait just to show you guys kind of what it can do with the preserved faces. Here I've got a photo. I downloaded this. It's just a stock photo. I didn't take it. Um, and the original photo, I think, was like four or 5,000 pixels wide, so it was plenty big enough, and I actually downsized it to 1,000 pixels. So what I'm trying to simulate here is, you know, you have low-resolution photos. A lot of people tell me they've used Topaz to upscale photos from their grandparents' photo album or anything like that. This would give you a pretty good idea of kind of what the software can do when it comes to that. Again, this is a 1,000 pixel wide by whatever the long dimension or the tall dimension is. Um, and so you can see when I zoom in here, you can see the before is on the left. This is the image that was given to Topaz. You can see it's pretty pixelated. So Topaz has selected face recovery. It's found four faces in the image. That's great. And it's also done a little bit of an upscale. It's trying to do like a 4X upscale, which is good because that will give us a little bit more resolution. So it's doing a face recovery and an upscale. And let's see how it did. You can see it's done pretty good. Now, this guy especially, just it kind of gives his face a little AI look to it. Not crazy about it, but I'll show you the original photo before I downsized it, and his face already kind of looks fake, um, I guess. So I'll show you what that looks like. But you can see that it it's done pretty well, especially on this child right here. The software has done such a nice job with what little it's been given. I'm amazed at how much it can really recover those faces. So this is the original image here before I downsized it. You can see this is about what their faces are looking like. So you can see that the difference is not too far. Like I said, his face doesn't look too great over here, but I think the kids especially, you can see it's done a really nice job upsizing this thing. Now again, this photo that you're seeing up top is not what I put into the software. I put in this right here and it upsized it to that. I just wanted to show you the original photo to show you kind of what these faces actually did look like. So the preserved faces has done a really nice job. Again, not something that I personally use, but I did want to show it to you because you may be looking into this software to do a little bit of face recovery. So it does work pretty well. Now let's talk about another feature that I don't think is all that useful, but I wanted to cover it so you could see it. That is the balance color feature. There's a few features I'm gonna show you now that I feel like have been added to more or less just say that they're there. Like it's just another perk of having the software, but I don't think they're all that useful. A lot of them may work good, but I think there's just better ways to do it. One of those is this balance color here. Essentially what this one does is it's supposed to fix the white balance on an image. So on this image, I intentionally skewed the image too far blue. Um, and then I ran this balance color at automatic settings. You can see it brings the image back and it kind of fixes the blue in the foreground. It looks all right. I mean, it's done a pretty good job. 
However, you can totally do this yourself. This might be helpful for those of you that really struggle to nail the white balance. Throw it in here, see what the software thinks. Uh, sometimes it works good, sometimes it doesn't. Of course, you can make some adjustments as well if you want to maybe adjust the opacity or adjust the temperature more than what the software is thinking. But that is the balance color. Now, one of the enhancements that I just haven't found a place where I think it's really gonna be useful is the adjust lighting option. You select it and it's supposed to adjust the lighting in your image to make it more compelling, I guess. Um, I selected it, I did the automatic setting for strength of 25. You can see this is what it's done. I mean, it's brought up the shadows, yes, but I can't tell what it's done other than just bring up the exposure. So this maybe would help with like, if you're restoring some old photos, but if you're a photographer like me, then you already have another editing software. I don't see what this does that I couldn't easily do in another editing software. So for that reason, the adjust lighting is just not one of my favorite features. So even if your photos aren't horribly noisy or blurry, I think there's still a lot of room for this software to be really helpful for you. Um, we've got Sharpen here, which is something I think that looks pretty good on almost any photo. You can see this photo here is a telephoto shot that I got of some trees in Joshua Tree. It's in focus, but I'm shooting at 600 millimeters, so I'm shooting super far away. Um, and I guess the lens, I mean, it's relatively sharp, but because we're shooting through so much atmosphere, the trees are not super, super sharp. So this software works nice to just kind of recover and bring back some of that sharpness. You can see it's done a really, really nice job through there. If you were finding that there was maybe a little bit of noise as well, like I'm seeing in this tree, it's pretty easy to click Add Enhancements, click on Denoise, um, and it'll choose the automatic settings that it thinks is going to be best. I'm guessing that, yeah, you can see now that's looking a lot better. We're actually removing the noise that we were adding via sharpening. So the sharpen and denoise is just a pretty nice thing to throw on almost any photo that you take regardless. This is just one example. I'll show you guys one more. And another one here, you can see this photo is, again, it's just using my telephoto lens. For some reason, it's just not as sharp as it could be. We'll zoom in one more time. You can just see the leaves are just lacking a little bit. So we hit that sharpen. Now, if you're finding that it's adding a little bit of noise, again, you can go in and adjust here. You could do the minor denoise, or I find it better to, again, just open up denoise right in here um, and let that load out. And then you can see it's done a very nice job. Um, additionally, it's super nice to be able to go in and just hit upscale or preserve text if you have an image with text in it. I'm not going to be talking about preserve text today, but that is another feature. But the upscale especially is nice for my images that are coming off my camera. They're plenty big for printing, but if you did have an, maybe an older camera or a smartphone or something like that, you can easily hit add enhancements and just hit upscale, which is going to allow you to upscale your image to whatever size print you want to make. Now the last feature that we're going to talk about, or rather not talk about, I guess, is the generative uh, remove, which essentially is like a spot heal using AI, really similar to what Photoshop has. Um, I'm not even going to click on it. The problem that I have with it is it is so incredibly slow. Now, am I using the absolute best computer? No but I am using like a $4,000 16-inch MacBook Pro from, I think it was, it's less than two years old. It's about a year to a year and a half old. Um, it's like fully loaded. I do all my video editing, all that kind of stuff on here, never have any problem. When every time I open up this generative remove, uh, it works so slowly. It just takes forever to do anything. Um, and I've I've sat here and waited and waited and waited and I've used it a few times and I honestly just find that like a spot healing brush is going to be so much better than this particular tool. So for that reason, I don't use the generative remove that they have here in Topaz Photo AI, but I did want to mention that was an option. So hopefully I gave you enough information that you can decide if you want to pick this up or not. If you're interested in my opinion, I'll quickly give it to you. 
I think this software is great. It has some nice upgrades over the previous versions of Photo AI. The models for Sharpen and Denoise are a lot better. Um, Sharpen, Denoise, and Upscale, in my opinion, are the three that most photographers, especially landscape photographers, are going to be using most of the time. If you are upscaling photos um, with faces in them, like old restoring old film scans and things like that, I think the software works great. Now, if you already have the software, maybe you're up for a renewal, is it worth it? The choice is up to you. There's a few nice features in here, but you do have to decide if it's worth it for you. The software is $200. I know that's not chump change when it comes to software, um, and that's a lot of money compared to some of the other denoisers on the market. I do personally think that Topaz is the best one on the market today, um, but they do have a lot of competition, of course, with DxO, with uh, Lightroom's got denoise now. Lightroom doesn't have a really good AI sharpener yet, so I think that Topaz still stands out in that aspect, and I think the denoise is slightly better here in uh, Topaz Photo AI than it is in Lightroom. Just my opinion. So the choice is yours, whether you want to get it or not. Really hope this was helpful for you. If you guys have any questions that you'd like me to answer, leave them down below in the comments. I'd be more than happy to get back to you, help you make a more informed purchase decision. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for being here. Make sure to subscribe if you do want to become better at photography. Um, this is the channel for you. Thank you guys so much for watching.